Get the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. next episode of Bergeron Briefs. My name is Art Bergeron. I'm an elder law attorney at Myrick O'Connell. Uh, as you know, the purpose of these shows is to really help folks who are elders um, try to understand better not only the issues that are confronting them and the programs that are available, but the people who are involved in these. I try to do these interviews to supplement the seminars that I do here in Wayland uh, and to try to get you a sense of, of who these people are. And with me today is actually one of the kind of leaders in terms of a lot of issues for those elders who are worried about or have or know someone who has Alzheimer's disease. Uh, my friend John Seisel, Dr. John Seisel. Um, and could you just, for the folks here, tell us a little bit about who you are and how you get interested in all of this and well, what you're doing. Well, my, my day job yeah. is as president of Hearthstone Alzheimer Care. Mm -hmm. And we have um, assisted living residences for people with dementia mm -hmm. in uh, Marlboro at New Horizons and in, um, in uh, Woburn, also mm -hmm. at a place called New Horizons at the Old Chode Hospital. And then three residences in New York City and around New York City. Um, and then we have a foundation called the I'm Still Here Foundation, which develops programs for people with dementia out in the community. And really the I Am Still Here Foundation in many ways kind of grew out of some of the, no the knowledge base that you really developed in these in, oh, absolutely. In, in the course of Hearthstone. Cause, so can you, can you talk a little bit about Hearthstone first? Sure. And about your, the, the sense that you have of Alzheimer's and of people who have Alzheimer's and what you try to accomplish at Hearthstone. And then I'd really like to talk about how some of those principles you feel are applicable in the community and can be expanded to a community. Sure, Art. So I've also written a book called I'm Still Here which is the basic philosophy a around which... A book that's a lot of fun, by the way. It's a lot of fun lot to of read. Fun. That's right. And it's, a, it's, a, it's an easy book to read. Right. Um, it does a little bit about the science, but it also has one basic message. And the basic message is just because you can't remember a few things or complexity is upsetting to you or you, um, you have difficulty organizing things doesn't mean that you've lost yourself. That you as a person are always there with the dementia, with early stage dementia, with mild cognitive impairment. So I'm still here is a message I hear all the time from people with cognitive issues. It's a wonderfully positive book. Well, yes. and, and if, if, it, yeah, go on. as well as having a, some wonderful kind of, every book has tips, but it puts it into kind of, a, of, a, of a, an intellectual framework, which is just wonderful. So, so thank you, first of all, yeah. nice compliments about the book. That's the principle and the philosophy we use at Hearthstone. Namely, we don't start and say, what can't people do? What are they unable to do? We start with the question of what can a person do? What is the person able to do? What are they interested in? Mm -hmm. What engages them? And what we find is that, and it's from the neuroscience studies I've done, that people are born to be creative. They're born to figure things out. They're born to explore. So at Hearthstone, we use the principles of I'm still here to help people continue to learn, to help people to continue to explore, to read. Um, uh, we, we have special books called Hearthside Side Readers that we've got. We've got a, 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 a drama program called Scripted Improv where the people who live with us, with dementia, are the actors, are the improvisers. Yep. They're the ones making up the roles. So, so that's the basic idea. And of course there's care um, and, and, and there is medical assistance if need, when needed, but the yeah. first thing we do is try to engage them non-pharmacologically 
and then see what else is needed. And, so that's and, the big and idea. For, and for those folks, these are folks who are living probably in a broader assisted living community, uh, and, and then it, but then the Hearthstone residents are, are part of that, that broader community? So Hearthstone, all the Hearthstones <coughs> are assisted living residences within larger communities. So New Horizons has 400 people living there, um, 48 of them live with us. I see. Um, in, uh, and it's around it's between 30 and 45 in different places. So that principle of I'm still here is the principle around which we develop programs uh, at the foundation as well. And can you just, can you talk about, can you give us some more examples of kind of what happens in the memory care unit in, at Hearthstone? Kind of what happens day to day and, and how would you characterize the, the kind of the level of care that is needed for the folks who are there? Or how would you characterize them? Yes. And then contrast that to folks who may still be living in the community and may be comfortable living in the community. Kind of, you know, because oftentimes that question arises. I often talk to clients. I say, look, my, my clients always, I, always, I have a wonderful right. couple, Frank and Mary, and their goal in life is they want to live in their house until they die and be buried in the backyard. People really prefer to be at home. But I always say that's a great, that's a great strategy as long as you're safe, as long as you can be at home and right. you're safe. And so there's this question about, so when is it that assisted living is kind of an appropriate alternative to that? Can you just kind of talk about that for a few minutes? Sure. And then let's talk about community. Right. So home is essential. But in our lives, we've lived in many homes. I lived in mm -hmm. a home that was my parents' home. I lived in a home that was a dorm at school. Uh, I lived in a home that was three people living in an apartment in New York when I went to Columbia. Uh, I lived in a home with my wife and children. That's now true. I live at a That's home true. with my wife. Each one of these is home. It's just very different. And um, so Hearthstone is home to those people. And the, 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 the issue of when is it useful to move, it's useful to move when the isolation becomes too much. Because one or two people living alone in a home can get isolated. Um, there's television, but right. that has limits. Right. Um, there are people who might come in, there are children who might visit, but still a lot of the time is spent alone. And when you have a cognitive issue, that aloneness becomes very burdensome. So people at Hearthstone, if you came, when you come and you walk through the door, people are going to say, welcome to my home, right. because it is their home. Their, their furniture is there, their, their clothing is there, um, the, the, on the wall are decorations, are pictures of their family. So, and, and in fact, it's sort of an interesting problem. Um, we had somebody just move in who was at another residence, and in the middle of the night he got up and said, uh, I, uh, it's home, this is my home, I don't want the lights on and I'd like to lock the doors. So he started to turn off all the lights. And the right. people who worked there, who cared for him, didn't quite know how to handle it, he ended up at a, in a police station. Because they, they said, don't turn off the lights, <laughs> you can't turn off <laughs> yeah. the lights. But of course he can, They're his, it's his home. But it's his home. So how you deal with that is, is an important question. Right. And we don't call our, our caregivers caregivers. Mm -hmm. They were called by residents, mm -hmm. resident companions. The residents chose that name. They said they're our companions. They're not caregiving to us. Right. They, they live with us. They help us get done what we need to get done. Right. And I suppose that, that, that's a great illustration, though, of how those caregiver companions, if they're talking to each other and they're talking to you kind of over time, can really develop an increasing understanding of a whole bunch of those little things or little ways in which you can make that a real home. That's right. Right. That's right. And in which, and, and I would suppose conversely, ways in which, if you were still at, at your at your other home, at your kind of individual home, what would need to be adapted in order to kind of make that work? Absolutely. Now, have you ch just one other question, just sure. about the assisted living? So, ha have you found that that population in those communities has changed over the last ten to fifteen years? Do you find that they they are older than they were before? Sure. That they are. I, I it, it is. I've watched over time. It seems to me how they to some extent the stigma of Alzheimer's has gone down. Certainly not a whole lot, but it's, it's changed so that people are just you know, kind of more accepting of it. Have you found is that, that any of that has changed in your communities? Well, people are just generally getting older who move in. Yeah. So when we started 
now about two decades ago, the people who moved in were people who now might be living in straight assisted living with some assistance. But it, it's, it's not I because see. they've gotten older, it's because regular assisted living is now has adapted to taking care of people with more and more issues. So we end up taking care of people later on in the, in, in the, in the stages. But actually, the best thing for someone is to say to themselves, mm -hmm. do I need community? Do I need friends around? Do I need people who can help me stay engaged? And if they can, and you have a place like Hearthstone where engagement is really the measure of our success, right. then it's worth, uh, it's worth making the move, not saying, oh my God, I can't, I can't handle it anymore, I have to move. Right, because you're saying to yourself, perhaps, it, it's interesting, you talked about your different, the different times, the different homes that you were in, and one of them was home the particular house with the kids. Right. And one of them is home, that same house, without the kids. But those are two very different homes. Very different. In terms of the dynamics of the home and the activity in the home. So it may be that you start saying, yes, this is the home that was all of these exciting things, but it's not now. That's right. And for me to find the exciting things, I can't be doing them here. That's right. Now I need to be doing someplace else. So yeah. can, can you kind of talk about how that knowledge has informed the I Am Still Here Foundation and then talk a little bit about uh, It Takes a Village. Sure. So, as I said, one of the things we find is that as people get older, even with a dementia, yep. they remain creative. And we found um, in starting, for example, programs at museums. Mm -hmm. So m about 10 years ago, we started the first um, a guided museum tours for people with dementia. This was in the Museum of Modern Art in New York, and we spent about a year and a half developing this program, and what we found was our residents were very able to take a look at a Picasso or at a, at a, at a, at, at, at um, Christina's world, mm -hmm. uh, this m photograph, the painting that everybody knows, and describe it and talk about it and say what they see in, in it. So whether you're looking at a painting or you're making a painting, it's drawing on the same skill, and it's a skill you never lose. You never become uncreative. Uh, in fact, because of the loss of inhibitions, mm -hmm. where you, uh, in, in some cases, you, if you feel something, you express it. Right. Now, that can be a problem in some situations. Yes. But if it's guided into a creative situation, it's a real benefit. Because people can say, well, that's what I see. And I go, wow, I never would say that, but it's true. Yeah. So yeah. what we realized was that if we can create or develop creative situations for people, um, that would be number one, a way of, 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 of keeping them aware of themselves. Mm -hmm. The second thing we realized was that there's no reason why people with cognitive issues, whether it be mild cognitive impairment, which is an early stage or early yeah. stage dementia, or, or, or Alzheimer's, need to be locked up to be safe. Yes, they right. need to be safe and, and not be, have, have open doors that walk out onto busy highways and busy streets. On the other hand, accompanied by people in a situation like a museum or like in the, um, the movie program we have at the Coolidge Corner Cinema mm -hmm. uh, in uh, Brookline, that if they're accompanied by people, if they're engaged in going to a place they want to be at, and if they're, they're, they're attracted by it and engaged during the event, yeah. they're completely safe. So right. why not give them the human right, and it really is a human right, to get out in the community and participate in social life? And that's what we found is, is, is very moving, but also fundamental to people's lives. Right. And so we've created, through the foundation, two programs, two major programs. First one is called Artists for Alzheimer's Arts, A-R-T-Z. Yeah. And that's the, 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 the basic approach to each, each event we run, whether it's a cooking class, whether it's a museum show, whether it's a movie program, whether it's a yoga studio class, whether it's a walking in the park walk, they all have the same principles. Namely, make the intervals between events short and make each event special in itself. So when you're taking a walk, we'll stop and look at a view and discuss it. Or we'll stop at a, 
at a, a special little cottage in the woods that we've seen and we'll talk about it. Oh, I or, see. So a walk isn't just, just generically we're going for a two-hour walk. No. It's, it's really, I would suppose, like going to the museum. It's That's actually right. going to in, and kind of getting a sense of a whole bunch of different Right. Let's look at this beautiful museum. tree. Let's look at that beautiful pond. Let's look at the flowers over here. Um, there's a bench. Why don't we sit down and, and talk about things a little bit? And by the way, I would, I would bet that some of this has been infor was informed by, I bet you do those kinds of trips from the Hearthstone. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you kind of get a sense of how those work. That's right. So, so, but the, the, and the foundation says, let's give people the human right to get outside and let's use the arts approach to engage and, 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 and respect and give dignity to each individual. Yeah. And then we realized, um, and this was actually a study we, we, we were engaged in in, uh, in, in England, in, in London, mm -hmm. uh, but it didn't, didn't go forward there, but now 10 years later it's moving forward in, uh, in Brighton actually, uh, outside of Boston. Um, we, we realized that if you could create events like this cultural events, creative events, exercise events, every week at the same time of, of, of the of same time of week, same day of the week, and same time of every day, of day yeah. that people with dementia would start after a month or two saying, it's Tuesday at 11 o'clock, where are we going? And this would be folks, the, the program in Brighton that, that you're talking right. about now you're doing in Brighton, this is really designed for folks who are still living at home. Who are still living at home, are living in assisted living in so, a place called so, oh, Jewish Community Housing oh, for the I see. Elderly. So it's both. It's I, everybody. I see. Because what we're going to be doing is saying we have a program, or what we are doing is saying we have a program in this restaurant. It's a cooking class. Mm -hmm. And sign up in advance. Now, a cooking class can only have about a dozen people. Yeah. But if it's a musical event, it could have 200 people. If it's a museum event, it's as many people as you need as long as we keep the groups six at a time so that there could be through. moving yeah. through. Yeah. Um, so at times it's a lot of people, at times it's not. You sign up in advance. We have a website um, which will, they will be able to, to sign up through. Um, we already have this going in Brookline. It takes a village Brookline. Yeah. That we already have the website going. Um, for all the movies programs we have, which is once every four months we have a program going for the, um, the uh, museum program, every Tuesday, 11 o'clock, we run a guided tour for people in one of 10 museums, all the way from Boston to Worcester. So oh. it's the regularity, mm -hmm. because the regularity feeds what's called procedural learning. Talk this is the big that. trick. Yeah, talk about that a little bit. Which is that, you, do you play golf? No. I don't play golf. But I'm told that people who that, play- we're, we're, we're probably the only two people at the same time that have admitted that, that right. who are our age, that we don't play golf. That we don't play golf. But people who do play golf, apparently they learn by hitting the ball over and over and over and over. The very reason why I don't play golf. I was never willing to go through that, to hit the ball that many times. Right. To right. get it right. To get it right. In fact, I'm told that people who play golf after hitting it all those times still don't get it exactly right. But, and they still are searching for the but, perfect right. So, that's how we learn to drive. That's how we learn to ride a bike. That's how we learn to sign our signature. That's how we learn to write. Mm -hmm. um, you're an attorney. I'm sure a lot of the things that you do need expertise that comes from experience. That's procedural learning. That learning system continues to exist among people with dementia. So if, for example, if someone lives in an assisted living program and um, after a month, you go and sit in the seat they always sit in at lunch, they're going to come and say, you're sitting in my seat. What does that mean? It means they learned that that was their seat. How did they learn? Every day they went to it. Every day they went. Although, it's, although it's funny, you talk about that, because I, I, I know from going to a restaurant regularly, I won't, I, you know, I won't go and tell that person that he's sitting in my booth. That's right. right. But he's sitting in my booth. He's when sitting I get in there, my that's booth. That's right. I'm like, well, what are you doing there? Yes. You know, I come at the wrong time? What is, what's wrong? Yes, and, 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 and you often see a bunch of older men sitting around in a coffee shop or a deli. At assigned seats. At a, seat. at a, at a and assigned And they're seat. always in the exact same seats, That's exactly. Right. That's right. So that procedural learning continues, which means that if I have learned <coughs> that Tuesday at 10 o'clock I do something, at a certain point I'll just remember that. Right. And I will have learned it. And so that's the secret of it takes a village. And I suppose in many ways that's 
if, if we assume that dementia is something that you're going to be living with for a long time. You are. Right? Um, to the extent that, you're, that you get used to those kinds of patterns of life in, 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 in your very, very early stage, so that, that, that itself is nothing but good. Because right. it, it gives you stabili stability as you are changing. It gives yeah. you predictability. Right. And that stability and predictability gives you a sense that you're not lost. So, so the regularity, the procedural learning, around it takes a village. It's not a real village, it's a virtual village. But if I know that, and, 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 and there's another wonderful benefit to this, which is if my spouse or my child goes with me, that child is no longer in charge of me. That no longer has to worry about me. So they We're, can be just be the child. You can just, can be, just be the spouse, just be the child. We're both going to the movies together and watching these interesting snippets and talking about them. Or we're both taking a walk in the park and they don't have to worry about how far it is from the lake, the pond, to the flowers, to the tree, right. to what we're looking at. Because somebody figured all that out already. Because somebody right? figured it all we're out. Just, now we're just kind of walking. And, now, and just walking is a huge gift to family members. And interestingly, you can do this in any place. So we could do this in Wayland. So, so yeah. I was just going to say, tell me about that. I was, I was interested about your earlier comment that you're really doing a range of museums because I was saying to myself, well, you know, Brighton, it's kind of like a village. You know, things, there are enough things that are so close that you could kind of count up that you could see how this would really That's work. Right. But, but, but tell me about how it would work in Wayland, right? Wonderful community. Uh, actually has a kind of a wonderful center in the, the southern part where it's kind of the old part that's more dense. Right. But, it, but, it's, it re but there's a lot of driving involved. You would think there'd be a lot of driving in well, terms of Well, first of all, there, <coughs> in every village there's a transportation issue. So we assume that just like any public event, mm -hmm. people will get themselves to it. On the other hand, um, in Brighton we've, we've put into the budget, um, which is, I told you, funded through CJP and uh, so that's JCAT, C CJP. is Combined Jewish Philanthropies. And um, uh, we've, put a, we've put transportation help. But we also use free transportation. We use the ride if we can. And we mm -hmm. educate people who drive for the ride on to how to handle early, early stage dementias that might, people might be on. So let's look at, at Wayland. First of all, there's wonderful restaurants. At 10 o'clock on a Tuesday or 11 o'clock on a Wednesday, it's unlikely there's a lot of people eating there. There is a chef, and if once every two months, two months, or once every three months, there's a cooking class where people can come, they park there, they can sit, they can learn how to right. make some nice simple dish or complicated dish. Um, they can talk about the food they used to make. They can talk about how important food is to them, diet, all of these things. So there's yep. a restaurant. Yep. Now, don't forget, I said once every three months. That means 12 weeks. All we need is 12 institutions. If we had 12 institutions who every 12 weeks did something, yep. um, you're talking about four times a year. So the restaurant does four times a year a cooking class. Uh, there must be a Wayland Historical Society. There's a variety of things. I mean, that's one of the interesting right. things. When you start thinking it out. So you, you go to the Wayland Historical Society. You say, well, are you open at 11 on Tuesdays? You say, 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 no. But then you have looking at the old, um, I don't know what the Revolutionary War pictures or um, the settlements. As you enter Wayland, it says it's the first um, settlement of the Sudbury Plantation. Well. There must be a history there. So now that's the second of the 12. Uh, is there a movie theater in Wayland? Close by, though. Close, Close by. by, yes. So that movie theater can adopt uh, the program, and I think you've seen that. Yep. We have called Meet Me at the Movies, where there are sec segments of iconic films we show and then discuss with the audience. That could, be a lo it could fill the theater. And that's something that you do at Coolidge Corner right now. That's right? what we do at Coolidge Corner now. Just kind of talk, can you just <coughs> talk about that one? Talk about how that, you know, the, the cadence of that, how sure. that works? Sure, sure. So I'm going to end just by saying yeah. you can easily invent 12. The minute you've got 12 and people have signed up, you have, it takes a village. And then it's a matter merely of helping to organize and coordinate and take reservations and make sure people can get there and publicize it through programs like this as well as through the video. Right. So how does it um, Meet Me at the Movies work? We have about 250 people who arrive <coughs> sometime between... Um, 10.30 and 11. Yeah. We try to get them to get there earlier. They get popcorn um, and, and, and soda. 
and they sit there and they watch um, on the screen is for two minutes is are the um, are, are projections of old posters um, and then we begin and there are over an hour period an hour mm -hmm. and 15 minutes <coughs> segments of iconic films that we have tested with people with dementia. So we have, um, um, you gotta have oh, Casablanca. what a beautiful, what? You gotta have Casablanca, right? So That's we have Casablanca, <laughs> the last scene. Yes. We have, um, we have uh, uh, Fiddler on the Roof, If I Were a Rich Man. We have, uh, what's that, that Christmas film at the end where? It's gotta be It's a Wonderful it's Life. It's a Wonderful Life. We have the end of It's the a Wonderful sound Life. Of it. It's so funny when you start talking right. about that. So because these yourself. are all so much of our lives. Right. And now we're, by the way, we're testing er later films, like when Sally met, um, whatever it was, but Harry. So, you know, we're looking at what can be done. So there's segments, each film is about five minutes long. And before the film, we have a little guessing game, two minutes. It's a, it's a musical. <clears throat> Everybody loves it. It's a wonderful music. It begins with O. Oh. They end up saying it's Oklahoma. And then we have, oh, what a beautiful morning. And then we have a, a reminiscence afterwards and ask the whole crew. We say, after, oh, what a beautiful morning, what's the most beautiful thing you've ever seen? It's wonderful. People talk about seeing their grandchild for the first time. People right. talk about sunsets. People talk about. So it brings out their, the, who they are and their memories. And then they begin the to remember having been there. So those are the kind of programs we've been developing, but... And, I, and yeah. I suppose you would take each one of the settings that you're talking about. Yep. You, you take a park, which isn't it would, a very different setting, but you try to think out similarly exactly. the ways in which you can kind of evoke, whether, whether you're evoking memories or just evoking the kind of the current, the place where you really are. That's right. I, I have to say that my favorite chapter from your book was when you were really kind of talking about the person with um, dementia as being a grace a yeah. blessing to the people who are around them yeah. because it, it kind of, and I've often, I often, I've, I've, I've repeated the story to clients, this mm -hmm. notion of having folks who are typically so embarrassed for their friends, right? That's or, right. Or, or, or just kind of not knowing how to deal with them because they're so caught up in what we're caught up in day to day, right? right? As we're having this conversation, I'm saying to myself in the back of my mind, I wonder how much longer we have on this film, or, I'm, or, or there are things that are, I'm, there are worries that are showing up, there are all these different things. And the wonderfulness of the person with, with later stages of dementia is that to be with them, you have to just be with them. Yes. And, and the past and the future are irrelevant and they're just there. It's very Buddhist-like, right. or a Je very Jesuit-like, this whole notion of just kind of finding God right here. Right? And, and the, but the notion of building that into the, a person's day that person's day can just really give that person that sense of fulfillment, right? As you say, even though they can't do the New York Times crossword puzzle, you know, they're still like, they're having a happy day. They're having a happy day. All right, thank you so, so much. So it, it's, thank you. It's, a, it's a wonderful thing. It's Thanks a wonderful so thing. No, so, so thank you for kind of giving us a sense of this. Uh, thank you very much for watching today. I'm glad that you got to hear Dr. John Zeisel to get a sense of what he's done at Hearthstone and how he's really kind of developed that into something that could really be community-based. Uh, I hope that you think about that in terms of the future of the town of Wayland. Uh, thank you very much for watching. We look forward to seeing you with the next episode of Bergeron Briefs. Thank you. Thank you, Art.